guys, this is Miron from Speaker of the Stars, and welcome back to my channel! Ha! I said my intro right this time. Cool. Okay, so the video that we're doing today is the third video in the Flora series, which is a series that I do every month where I would draw the flower that corresponds or is assigned to that month. So if you're familiar with birthstones or birth gems, uh, it's similar but they're flowers. So for March, we are doing the daffodil. And the daffodil supposedly represents the spring, rebirth, domestic happiness, respect, regard, and friendship. So it's very... It's somewhat centered around positive vibes and um, like rebirth and spring and fresh beginnings, I guess. Since it did come up twice. And from what I read, supposedly it's because March is the season of spring. Uh, I wouldn't know since I live in a tropical country, but supposedly that would be the reason why it really deals a lot with spring and rebirth. So given that, and the daffodil, um, I really did want to go with that feeling for the picture. So I chose the daffodil that, that is white since that seems to be the most common or the most that would fit with the theme of like pure freshness and stuff like that. So to do that, to give off that feeling, I wanted to draw a girl that's just like happily um, maybe frolicking in a field of daffodils, uh, just enjoying her day outside because things are like fresh and not so hot, like warmish and stuff like that. And I wanted her to be holding a bouquet of flowers in her arms and also holding another bouquet in her hand just to show that she's really enjoying herself. Also, I wanted to have a bit more motion in this piece because for uh, Carnation and Violet, it was a bit more static. It was more of just a person posing. With Carnation, it was just like a frontal pose. Um, for Violet, it was more of a sultry, um, over-the-shoulder look. But for Daffodil, I wanted to have some motion in it. So I would imply that through her hair and her skirt, like she was just twirling around and as I did mention, frolicking around the fields. And yeah, I just wanted her to be in an expanse of white flowers. Unfortunately, maybe I should have used a different colored um, fine liner or a colored fine liner, not black, because the black makes it look, look, make it look a bit heavy. So the white didn't stand out as much, to be honest. So we're still using the Faber Castle Polychromous colored pencils for this piece. And I actually almost wanted to mix mediums for this drawing. Like I wanted to use the Pit Artist Pens, which is also by Faber Castell. Um, they're a bunch of markers, basically. I have the brush pen of them, so they're in the ink markers. And I thought about using them, except I wasn't really sure because in the series so far, I've only used colored pens as the main medium. For Carnation, I did use a black brush pen for it, but it wasn't the main um, medium or it was still colored pencils basically. I wasn't really sure if I wanted to mix mediums because it might look inconsistent when I would put all of the cards in a set or in a row and like there are different mediums, it might, it might look like it's not part of the same thing. So I sort of stuck with colored pencils for this one. And I actually would like to hear some opinions on this, whether you think that it would be alright if I mix mediums. Like, do you think it would still look like it's part of the same series, or should I just continue with colored pencils? One thing I do know is that I wouldn't use watercolors with this, since I use watercolors a lot already. And I do want to use my other art materials around here, so you'll still see watercolor, but it would be in different works, maybe like in the Knights of the Round Table work or something else. But for this, let me know if you think it's okay to use stuff other than colored pencils. 
So the ray of light was really part of the piece from the start. Even when I was just conceptualized, conceptualized, what is words? Even when I was just conceptualizing the piece, I already knew that I wanted to have like rays of light. <coughs> hmm. Excuse me. To have rays of light already coming down, like from the sun, in a different manner from that which was incarnation. Because with incarnation, it looked like some holy being or god or something like that was, um, you know, raining down light into to, towards the girl in the picture. But since this particular rays of light isn't exactly center, it comes from like an angle. It feels a bit more like a really natural light and not something that was slightly artificial. So yeah. Also with her skin tone, um, I, I originally wanted to go with a light colored skin for her since I thought that it would look good with the white flowers. But then I realized it looked a little pale. And that since I wanted her to look like she's having fun in the field, maybe she spends a lot of time outside, I wanted her to be a bit more sun-kissed and a little bit tanner than the other characters or the usual people that I draw. And I don't really draw um, darker skinned characters mainly because a lot of my OCs are light-skinned because they came from an era when I was really, really young and I wasn't I was pretty obsessed with light skin characters. So I don't have a lot of, you know, other tones of skin. So I'm not really good at doing it yet, but I think it does look darker when... She does look a bit darker when I put her beside the other characters I've drawn in the series so far. Another thing I had a hard time with was the color scheme of the entire piece. Since I wanted the flowers to be white, I didn't know how I would fit in other colors or to make the colors still not like the super focus for the entire piece. Like I still wanted that I still wanted the daffodils to stand out. And it was a bit tough. Like I knew I wanted blue but I thought that maybe I could do that for the sky. So I actually just pulled up a color wheel and just sort of figured out where I wanted to put what and stuff like that. So since she's outside, um, I put a lot of effort into putting a bit of like highlight and color and yellow on her skin and her hair, her dress, so that she really looks like she's part of the piece. But other than that, it's yeah, pretty much like that. The thing that would be a bit weird though would be the background later because I wanted to maybe do like a pink to blue sunset vibe of sort. But I think I didn't really 100% um, manage to do that. So you saw me testing out how I wanted to do it quickly. And I started with the pink first. And then I felt like, oh no, maybe I did it a bit too much. Like it's too saturated with color. But it was too late. So I just rolled with it. I also had a hard time filling in that large area of white because since I'm not used to using colored pencils for large areas of coloring, I didn't know how to color it in and make it look even and, you know, in the same stroke. So I would color in the sky, especially the blue part, several times just to make it look even and not scratchy and splotchy or anything like that. So, we're nearing the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, please look forward for the next uh, series, which will be um, April. So that will be the fourth video. Um, follow me or like this video if you enjoy these kind of content. I do a lot of fan art, anime, traditional, and digital pieces. Um, yeah, basically a lot of drawing and art stuff. Just have fun. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and DeviantArt. And I will see you around.